Hey, good to see you. Adi here from Hit The Road Music Studio. Welcome to another series where we break down the term world music. The idea behind this series is to bring you world music closer and break down all these incredible genres from all around the world. We will talk about biker music, cumbia music. We will do it with interviews with artists who are playing this kind of music successfully over the years. We will jump into mixes, mix breakdowns, songs that I recorded in my past, so you can understand this music more and the thinking process behind it when you record music that you are not familiar with for the first time. Additionally, we will show you some behind the scenes material from our recording sessions. <laughs> Hope that you learn more about the rhythm, the culture and the motivation of this music, where it comes from, the roots of it. Today it will be super hot and we go into one of my favorite music styles called Cumbia. We have two interviews for you today. One with Ugne Daniele, front power woman from the band Balcumbia, uh, based in Barcelona. And we talk with Hockey Sonidero. Hockey Sonidero is an incredible band that we recorded in Krakow, founded by members from Chile and now playing cumbia with members from all around the world. And this shows again that music connects. This is my main message. Each one is different, but we are all equal. And music is the universal language that connects us worldwide. Even if we don't understand the language, we are still able to dance and enjoy music. For me, this is fascinating. If you haven't yet, feel free to check out my mixing tutorials that I created for Promix Academy. There are 17 tutorials in total, and you will see how I break down over 24 songs that we recorded. The songs are chosen carefully, so you have a wide variety of different mixing styles, different mixing techniques and different music styles. I'm specialized in transforming regular houses or castles or houses on an island into professional record studios. In these tutorials, I will bring my techniques closer to you. The syncing process, how we met the bands, what mics I'm choosing, why I'm choosing those mics, because every recording situation is different. Therefore, I have to evaluate the room and think which mics would be the best for this situation in the live recording session. After this we go into the mix preparation, how to prepare your mix, bring it further, make a raw mix, how to bring this mix further and then finish it. At the end on most of the tutorials there will be a quick guide on mastering, great tips that I learned during these times. With your purchase, we will be able to continue with our journey and record more bands worldwide and bring them to you. Let's jump into the first interview and discover the world of Cumbia together with Ugne Daniele. She will share her favorite bands with you, how you can get started into the music and what makes the music so special. Hello everybody, today we are with Ugne from the band Bal Cumbia. Ugne, how are you doing? Hey, hello everyone. I'm very, very happy to be here and yes, super nice. Awesome. Uh, please introduce yourself and uh, let us know what, what are you doing? Okay, so uh, my name is Ugne. I'm uh, a singer, performer, songwriter and uh, well, making more creative things, but mainly that's my focus and I'm based in Barcelona. I'm really interested in in world music, Balkan and cumbia mainly. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's who I am more or less, being <laughs> short. <laughs> Amazing. So um, you're playing in the band by cumbia. For me, this sounds very interesting. I listen to the band on Spotify. We know you actually before we met. Um, like, uh, oh, by cumbia, I know this. <laughs> so... How can you describe the music that you are playing? 
describe the music that we're playing? Well, well, it's a fusion to start with. I think uh, you can tell it by its name that it's based on a fusion of Balkan and Cumbia. So we kind of came up with this interesting mix of two styles, but um, it's always our main like main focus to stay in these two genres but as we are from all over the place in the band we're quite a few we're eight people and um i think non not even one nationality repeats maybe ah oh, one yes but like we're from many different countries and uh, we can't help it but to influence our you know our songs and uh, and and arrangements in you know with our culture so it's really um very um like very rich sound with a lot of different influences from all over the place with a solid base of balkan and cumbia as i could say oh wonderful and uh, uh, what what lead to this mix like how did you decide to play this kind of music yeah this is a funny story actually um, <laughs> it wasn't really planned it wasn't really like a really like strategic way of creating or something. We were just like a bunch of uh, newly arrived to, to the city musicians that were looking for people to play with. And like I entered the band in like, I don't know, one week after it started. So so I wasn't like from the beginning, beginning, like seven days later. <laughs> uh, but the the main founder of the band was a ukulele player Diego Saez. He um, really was looking for people to play with. The, the thing was that Diego was playing cumbia and Pier Paolo was playing Balkan. So he <laughs> said, "Okay, well, just we will play this together, and it will happen somehow." You know, <laughs> and then we like people joined in, and we say, "Oh, this is working. This is beautiful." And uh, here we are now, six years after. Wow, six years after. Yeah. This, this leads to the, to the next question. Since, since when does the band exist and what instruments are there? Okay, well, we this, the whole story happened, the one that I just told was like 2015, so 2021. Well, we're five years and a half. Okay, let's call it that way. <laughs> Springtime, <laughs> happy birthday. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's been six years. We've been doing a lot of things and... We are quite a, a big band. We most of the time we were eight people. Like we started off as five, but then really quickly we got the second wind in the wind section and um, and the drum set. So we're eight people. And um, and what instruments are there? So yeah, this is, we have drums, we have saxophone, we have trumpet, bass, electric guitar ukulele, um, darbuka, like oriental percussion, and uh, me, the singer, with all the little maracas and wiro and all this, like, very characteristic percussions you have in, in cumbia style, yeah. Wow, what, what an amazing story and a great mix. <laughs> yeah, it is a great mix, actually. Uh, we're from all over the place, like, I'm Lithuanian, we have a guy from Chile, Venezuela, Peru, Italy, uh, Spain, of course, and uh, also Uruguay. Wow. Yeah, so it's a big mix. That's wonderful. Music connects. Music is really the connector. Yeah, definitely. Like, um, I sing in many languages in this in this band because, like, as we're passing by all the Balkan Peninsula and also I sing a lot in Lithuanian um, and, of course, Spanish. So... So it's very rare that really an audience can understand all the um, all the concerts, all the lyrics. So our main message is never through the lyrics. It's so much for about like the you know that we're all together and our slogan in Spanish is like uh, "Fusión bailable de ritmos inmigrantes." That we're all you know we're all immigrants. We're all we all came together in one place because we're like you know musical nomads and. You know, music connects us and it connects us with the people and it connects us with each other. And that is the message we want to send, you know. Wow, beautiful message. And hmm. um, so you're from Lithuania. Where does your passion for cumbia come from? What, what do you love so much about the music? 
Well, uh, it is another funny story. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I um, I was never uh, looking for it. Like neither Balkan or uh, Cumbia was. It just happened to to come to my life in one parking lot in Greece one night that we were just traveling with my friends and somebody put like um, a very well known compilation Roots of Chicha. I don't know if you if you heard about it. It's really oh great. yeah yeah I love it. <laughs> yeah, it's like like you know to the the starting kit <laughs> and somebody just put play and I was like wow this is amazing music I need to know what it is I've never heard about it and I love it already and yeah that was the first uh, like I really remember that night was very you know I got an impact <laughs> and then when when I, I started uh, I came to Barcelona and started to to look for musicians to play with I came across Diego and Pierpaolo and they say oh like you should sing with us, even though I wasn't singing any of the styles that they were telling me. And I was like, so what do you play? Well, we play, you know, Balkan and Cumbia. Do you want to join? I was like, yeah, sounds cool. You know, like, sounds like nice music. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I gave it a try and I fell in love and here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, we we started also when, when we listened to the album, The Roots of Chicha, it's like, <gasps> what is this? What are the sounds? Oh my God, so creative and yeah, very catchy. Great. Yes, yes, definitely. Although it is a bit like, it is already, like, cumbia itself as a concept is really wide, you know, like, when you start off Afro-Colombia and you have just drums and voice and it's really powerful and raw sound and I really love this type of, like, like this, like, the beginning of cumbia, it's really great and then you just follow its paths all over the world, you know, and you see how it changes and takes another shapes and forms and sonorities and it's still still cumbia, you know, that's the beauty of the style that it just is so wide and and it's so like, you know, accepting and generous, you know. Like now you know very well there is a you know cumbia band in Lithuania which you couldn't even think of and when it all started <laughs> off in in Caribbean you know this is so crazy and beautiful <laughs> yeah you you mean uh wait, Paranda Polar yeah exactly yeah yeah I saw them live even in Poland it, like in incredible the, the yeah. style is popping up <laughs> yes definitely now you know you have European cumbia you have I guess you have Chinese cumbia as well which I Still haven't heard of, but I'm sure they are. And then, you know, all the different Argentinian cumbia, Chilean cumbia, Mexican cumbia, like Peruvian cumbia. And they're all very, very authentic and very different and beautiful at the same time. Oh, wonderful. Mm -hmm. So what what are your, that always the hardest question, what, what are your top three cumbia bands you could recommend for the listener to get started with the music? I was really like... I was waiting for this question <laughs> to come and I was <laughs> yesterday I was just like you know had a coffee and thought about it quite a while and was just like what a hard question <laughs> I guess I I, um, I will go for like for me like the bass and like the most like the the bands that made the most impact and they're the most inspiration for me when I play or sing or or try to learn songs and they're really roots like um, uh, Los Gaiteros de San Jacinto it's a very known band I mean it's like the the ones who made it kind of known worldwide I've happened to see, uh, see them live here in Barcelona and, and really made an impact on me and I well if somebody haven't heard about them please listen to them <laughs> they are great they're amazing they're a family there are some people who, who already don't play but their children play and and it's a you know it's a wonderful way to to maintain the tradition and and the music and then i really well, another great big name uh, lucha bermudez the one who who made cumbia like a bit more sophisticated if we could call it that way you know suddenly it's an orchestra suddenly it's an arrangement suddenly but you know it's different vibe but it's uh, it's beautiful it's genius and i really enjoy we used to play some of its um, his uh, tunes with balcumbi as well like as a, in a concert and yeah i think it's just 
beautiful piece of art. And then Los Mirlos, of course. Los Mirlos de Peru. And uh, yeah, I don't know if I have to say anything about them because they, you know, <laughs> Los Mirlos, they are the great Peruvian cumbia, like soul and heart and, and influence. I think these are like the top three for me and the whole... I mean, it's so hard to say that I just had to choose something. So here you are. <laughs> you know, now Whoa. we have the modern bands. That I love a lot of Chilean cumbia music. I have some bands from Argentina that I die for as well. But you know, three, <laughs> three days. <laughs> Wonderful. I, I think that this is really good to get started with, with the music. Thank you so yeah, much for sharing. Yeah, starting kid, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the emergency kit for good vibes. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, then let, let us know where can people listen to your music and find your band. Ah yes, well, Balcumbia is written with K to be to start with. So be careful writing Balcumbia. It's with with K, you know, K kilo, <laughs> and um, you can find it well everywhere. Actually, we're on Instagram, Facebook. You can listen to us on YouTube. You can um, get our CD in Bandcamp. We are on Spotify, of course, and iTunes, I think. So anywhere you type Balcumbia that has some music in it, I think you can find us. <laughs> and we are working on our um, quarantine kind of CD that, you know, the lockdown was long, so we had time to, to compose, and we have quite a few new songs coming up, so hopefully soon mm. we can. We'll be able to share it with the wild world, and yeah. I hope you'll enjoy listening to it. Wonderful. So people can stay tuned for more music. That's amazing. Exactly. Yes. Thank you so much for the interview and uh, sharing your insight. Oh, thank you, Abby. It was really great. <laughs> Have a wonderful day. <laughs> you too. Bye, everyone. Bye, Adi. This is incredible. Thank you so much, Ugne. Um, we had an incredible record session in Morocco. She came from Barcelona to Morocco with Ofaronen and Lala Tamar. They made the flamenco trio. She's so versatile in the style of music she's playing. And yeah, check out some behind the scenes material about this record session. in the summer and also back with my car mm -hmm. and had like uh, yeah like just my sound card my computer the camera a tripod it's so easy today yeah. enjoyed this material let's jump into the next interview together with Hoke Sonidero who will tell you more about the instruments used in cumbia the diversity of cumbia in Latin America and worldwide as we saw now with Ugne there is a big hit of cumbia music in Europe as well and we will talk also about our record session and see some behind the scenes material from it hey what's up everybody Adi here with the band Choque Sonidero 
Um, we recorded together in 2019 two singles that you can find on uh, our channel. And we have the pleasure to talk a little bit about their music style, where they come from, and yeah, the specific style they are playing. Hey guys, how are you doing? All good? All good. All good here. Thanks, Andy. Perfect. So, so good to see you after a long time. Ooh, uh, <laughs> almost, almost one year so far. Yeah, almost one year, man. We had a re really good time. Um, you're not alone. Who are the guys beneath you? Cristobal from Chile. He's the Hi. guitar guy. The new guitar. And Hector, the percussion guy, is in the video as well, in the meeting. Yeah, that's me. Hello. Hey, Hector. Nice to meet you. Nice to see you guys. But this is not the whole band, right? No. No, no, we have a... Uh, well, we have a uh, trombone here, Ricardo, me, I'm the bass, guitar, Cristobal, he's the new guitar, he just joined the band. Hector is always, almost new, he has one gig in Forti Clepas, his timbals. We also have Rafa in trumpets, we have Demian in trumpet, we have a new trombone, Gaspar, and we have Paul, who is playing with us from time to time. In also the, the percussion. From Venezuela, Congas. And we have a new singer, uh, Wilfred. He's uh, from, Venezuela. from Venezuela. Oh, wow. So there are members from all around the globe in your band. Yeah. yeah. Uh, with uh, Francisco, we started the band two years ago with other people, and, du and during the road, some other people joined, and some people left. Right, yeah. Actually, we had a different name in the past. It was Santa Jarana. With different members, we were mainly Latin American people. So three members left because they left Poland, and we keep going, and we found this nice musicians now. now. Now I'm curious, for how long you are living in Poland? Since when you are there? Uh, in my case, I've been living since 2014. When I be, it's like six years now. I'm um, Francisco. I'm a bit later, 2016, I think. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not very sure exactly when, but it's around five, four or five years. Uh, my brother, he just arrived two months ago. Um, Hector, I don't know how long you're here. Two years it's or something? Three, like that? three years. In February, I will be three years in Krakow. Actually, we met. I met with them in a, a um, Latin event, music. So I met Francisco and then we met each other. But I didn't know he was playing timbals. It was just chance. The same as with Ricardo. We were drinking one day and told him, hey, why we don't play cumbia? Uh, he said, yeah, yeah, sure. And I say, I used to play trombone and I saw his shiny eyes, like, oh. Oh, and he said I can play bass. So the next day we went to the, to shop. the shop and we bought the instruments. <laughs> <laughs> Just like that, without planning. <laughs> oh, wow. 
this is amazing. These are these are the best bands if you're not planning, if you're not doing too much, just like yeah. out of the moment. Yeah, it's incredible. Same, the same with Hector. We were like going out and then we were talking about music and he told me that he used to play trance for how long? Ten years? Even more? Twelve. Twelve. Yes. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> so when 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 he said that when when he said that we thought oh we got our percussion guy now. <laughs> yeah, it was very nice because uh, with Ricardo we bought the uh, timbals just just to have them because the we ne needed them. So we bought them and we told Hector, hey, we have the timbals. You don't need to even buy your instrument. He said, okay, I will think about that. <laughs> Yeah, because I play the drums and the drums are not the same. I mean, it's, they are percussions, but they are not the same instrument. So I say, okay, let me try. If everything goes good, if I pass your filter, then we can do it. And I think they like it. They were very polite not to tell me they didn't like. So I continue in the band. But it's funny because I wanted to play the trumpet with them, but they told me, no, we don't. We need a percussion guy and you stay in the percussions. I, I don't care if you play trumpet. So I, want, I try to get rid of, of percussions because percussions is a big instrument and I didn't want to charge every time. So that's why I decided to study trumpet because it's small, not heavy, but I'm screwed with these guys. <laughs> now, I really, I, I really like to play the, the percussion scene. It's good. No, but he plays timbal beautiful. You can, you can feel the flavor of cumbia. Oh, I'm blushing. <laughs> It's blushing. It's blushing. Wow, that's amazing. I can't wait to see you guys live again. <laughs> yeah, you need to play with us one day, a few songs. Yeah, I will, man. Definitely. I bring the guitar with me. Yeah. <laughs> we can play some. Time. We couldn't do it. Yeah. Yeah, I was. I, I think always when you played the gig, I played also a gig. When was that? In uh, June. Or July 2019. Ah, I, re I remember that I invited you and you said that you were also playing that time. Yeah. Damn. But everything will happen in the right time, in the right moment. Guys, what, what, what can you tell me uh, or what can you tell us about the uh, cumbia music, especially about the, the rhythm? Where, where does this style come from? What is so special about this musical style? It's a good question because uh, cumbia it, it's, uh, has a different style in different countries. For example, in Mexico, they have a different uh, cumbia than we play in Chile. And they play in Venezuela or Colombia. Mm, what, uh, what do you think, Hector? Yes, I think uh, in essence it's kind of the same. The thing is that we play in almost every party, like weddings and this kind of stuff in all Latin America. So, yeah, even if it's not like the same exactly it's almost the same soul the same mm. essence we can dance almost in the same way so it's that's pretty good that we can uh, adapt real quick even if we are from chile mexico or whatever yeah and the good thing is the plus of cumbia is that it's a freestyle dancing so we compare with salsa because salsa is very famous in in poland or europe let's say you found you find a lot of uh, salsa classes and groups, so the difference is that we don't need a, you don't need a class or step. It's just a freestyle dancing, and you dance as, as you want. So, sounds good to me, man. <laughs> 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 I take it. It sounds good. Who who are your three top artists that that people should check out, like um, to to get the essence of cumbia? So let's say uh, everyone can say one. I mean, it's a hard question because yeah. it depends which cumbia you like. Because you have all the cumbia from the Pacific Coast, is the old uh, like the classic cumbia in the, from uh, Peru, Ecuador, Chile, or most uh, mainly from Peru in the 60s or the 70s. And there you have like the the start to, from the cumbia. So you have in, in uh, Peru from the 60s or 70s los los, los mirlo. Los destellos, they are like more psychedelic cumbia. And experimental, more like jazz, mix the jazz. Actually, the one of the songs we recorded, Electrico, is from the Los Destellos, it's a Peruvian band, and they are and that song is from like from the 70s. It's 
very psychedelic, I mean, or original uh, cumbia. Yeah. But in Chile, you also uh, you have more bands. I mean, and most of the band in Chile, uh, they are based on the traditional cumbia from Peru. And you have Chico Trujillo, for example. And Colombia, for example, also they have very good uh, bands. Venezuela, they have different rhythms. But as uh, Hector said, the it's at the end is kind of the same family of music, same wave. But I will say for me, one my top band is uh, Los Miblos, like a uh, classic cumbia, old new bands uh, with more uh, modern sounds, like could be Sonido Gallo Negro from Mexico or uh, from Chile Santa Feria. Those are bands that have developed a new sound and a modern rhythm. Modern guitars, more brass section, more solo, they include solo in the songs as well. But keeping the rhythm and the, the idea of what cumbia is. That's for me two top bands. I don't know for you, Ricardo, <laughs> or Cristóbal, Hector. Yeah, I agree. And in Mexico, you also have a bunch of bands. I bunch mean, that bands, is a different yeah. world. <laughs> I mean, it's still cumbia, but it's totally different world. Hector can talk about more the Mexican cumbia. Or top bands as well. Yeah. I think uh, my, in my top three, I will put uh, Los Angeles Azules. That is now quite famous. It's a classic band from Mexico, I will say. Uh, and I, I like uh, Sonora Santanera. It's not cumbia, it's more sonora and also a little bit of mambo. And we are trying to introduce this into Choque Sonidero with one song. We start with one song. So let's see how it goes to go also to explore another rhythms. So yeah, I will go with these uh, two bands for now. So. What what are typical instruments that are used in cumbia? I, I think there are many instruments that maybe some viewers here don't know. Yeah, something like exotic instruments, I would say, that are more, more mostly in the uh, percussions, I would say. And maybe because it's my area. So usually we have uh, congas and timbales. So I will say that they are mandatory, the cobel and the blocks in the cumbia are the things that are keeping the, the beeps, the beat. So also in the brass part, I think Ricardo can tell us more. You can, you can mention that there are a lot of gadgets, no? For the, uh, percussion people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can have the shaker to make different uh, special effects of the sound. So. In the percussions, it's uh, limitless. It's really a lot. So, but one of the, the percussion is the guiro. At least in Chile, we call it guiro. In other countries, they call it uh, charrasca. In Venezuela, for example, guaracha. Guaracha. But the guiro is, is the is the classic sound of cumbia. That that is very uh, how do you say in English? Uh, uh, typical in uh, and it's very important, very important to have that one. A band without widow sounds different than a band with widow. Yeah. And widow is a particular instrument because it looks really easy to play. It's like what really it's very tricky one to keep the rhythm and uh, we have tried with some people and it's hard to find a good uh, widow player. Yeah. There are not many. <laughs> Amazing. What, what, what are your next plans with the band? Any, any concerts, any preparation, recording or writing songs? In which, which phase are you with the band at the moment? We, we were in a very good position. We had uh, like a mini tour in Krakow, Wrocław, uh, Warsaw with, the, with our friend band in Wrocław. There is another cumbia band in Wrocław. So with them we are trying to make a uh, like a little cumbia family. So we were going touring, but uh, fortunately, you know what happened. <laughs> yeah, but uh, this is plan. As soon as everything gets better, we, we, we will tour with them, uh, mini tour. And I think we are working in the songs we have and adding new songs. I don't know what else uh, it's under the 
uh, yeah, waiting to do. What else? Um, we wanted to record some songs, but yeah, now it's, it's difficult because all this pandemia situation. And so at, at, at the moment, a little bit on hold, but you got already plans to move on. Yeah, when the yeah. when it changed. That, that's make, the best way to go. We will make t-shirts. Because we have a new logo, so we want to make yeah. t-shirts with the new logo. <laughs> I will buy one. Okay. 50% discount. You <laughs> 50% cut or more? Oh, for you, for you. For you for free, man. Come on. Ah, uh, you're too kind. Eh? Yeah, we had a good time. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for your time. Tell us, how can people find you online and uh, book you for the shows? We are in Instagram and in Facebook, Choque Sonivero, mm -hmm. and you can contact us there. May, uh, send us a message. Just write Choque Sonidero and you will find all the media. Yeah. We also have Bandcamp. We have uh, a few more uh, platforms. Perfect. I, I will add all of them down in the description. Um, in general, when you're in Poland, you need a uh, good band for the good vibes. Um, I, I heard a lot of great reviews also from your gigs. People were dancing. It's something very unique for Poland. Yeah, I, I think you guys have an amazing concept and really good vibes. And you're a fantastic musician. So I wish you all the best after, after all the situation gets cleared again. I think there, there, there is a lot... Um, a lot of shows for you. Way more stuff is waiting for you guys. Just hold on. Thank you. Thank you, man. And I, uh, we are looking forward to seeing you here in Krakow and to see you in our gigs. Oh, definitely, definitely. I will join you guys. So say, thank you so much for this amazing explanation. I think now it's more clear what Cumbia is for people. They, everybody will get um, uh, so, some more bands that they can discover the music on their own. Of course, also the videos that, that we created. And um, yeah, thank you guys. Thank you for this great time. Thank you, you all the best. Incredible. I love those guys. And for me, it's fascinating as we recorded them in their first stage. Now the band and band members changed and they have a really good band together with an incredible vocalist and fantastic musicians. This is why I love music production. It's not just about mixing those tracks, but also going this path with the artists. And this makes me really proud. So, let's have a look into the Promix Academy courses that I created and learn what is so incredible mixing Cumbia music, including very helpful tips and tricks that can hopefully help you to become a better mixing engineer and train your ears. Let's have a listen here. At first, the uh, one section we have uh, Agata on the saxophone. Really, really, really cool person and really, really, really talented musician, hard working every day. Let's have a listen what I'm doing here. Let's have a listen without any effects and no parallel compression. Again, a lot of bleed from the drums because the drums were directly behind the horn section. I placed them in the front because of the microphones. Uh, I didn't have place for all of the members on the stage. So it looked cool how they are looking in front of the stage and I could give everybody his separate mic and work on them individually. So let's dive into Agatha's mic. I put her in the center because she played the main melody here. Oh, there's a lot of reverb. What's going on here? Horns reverb. I'm cutting everything below 140 hertz. I'm cutting all the top end until 8.2 kilohertz. Again, shaping. Almost no compression. Usually I don't like compressing instruments like that because they, sh they should sound more natural for me. Um, again, a high shelf cut on 8.6 kilohertz. 
uh, giving space for other elements a little bit boost in the mid-range three and a half kilohertz there is the tone of her saxophone and again individually it will maybe not sound fat as you imagine it but in the sum all together sound really good together they're gluing together again um, I wanted more body here so I pushed 7 dB on 960 Hertz Uh, this is a very important f frequency for the saxophone. I'm always, you know, you know how, how I find how I find it. Just sweep around and check what is sweet for me. This is one way of doing it. The other one, and this was my mental exercise to um, learn about the frequencies here. I was listening a track. It will take longer, but it will help you. It will really help you. You know, it's this extra effort we should give in to make the difference. You listen to a track, let's say to the saxophone, you close your eyes, you say, I need more of 1K. So you choose 1K, with the plugin off, you choose 1K, you boost it, then you turn it on, you listen, you turn it off, and you check how close you were to your guessing. And then you adjust again. Okay, maybe it's not 1K, maybe it's 900 Hertz, you know? Like this, not just sweeping around. I do it also all the time. It's not time, you know, but I just did it at the beginning to to get a feel for all the frequency ranges. I hope this makes sense and I hope this can help you. And after this, I cut more low end out here, 3 dB, 60 Hertz. That's it, one plug in. We got the first part here and there is automatic panning. She's more on the right, 41% on the right all the time until her solo the solo along with the panning it's getting louder because it's coming closer there's some movement and I added more volume directly on the track so this FX are directly on the track they are not here and I'm adding the API 550. Um, adding 2.5k for more clarity again. Um, 240 Hz, 4 dB boost to get more of the body. And maybe it sounds silly, but it makes it a little bit more present, like more dominant in the track. Um, you can imagine this frequency is also like a weight. I would use the words root you a little bit, you know, and this is what I wanted. I wanted to root the people and catch uh, attention when she's playing her solo. So I boosted more of the low end here. And then we make a 4 dB boost as well. Let's have a listen. <laughs> So, this sounds tasty to me. <laughs> Lovely saxophone solo. The next one is the tenor. I hope you enjoyed this snippet. If you'd like to learn more, head over to Promix Academy. There is the link down there in the description. Discover those courses for you. We have many courses like Proy Kobieta or Isulan and Sahara, where you have even two mixing breakdowns there. Though I recorded the tracks in the same environment, with the same mics and the same setup, I use two different mixing techniques. Thanks so much for watching. If you learned anything or if you have any questions to the bands, leave a comment below there. I'm more than happy to answer it or forward the questions to the bands. Check them out on Spotify, on YouTube, support those bands, especially in those times. I got great feedback from other bands who just received lovely messages from all around the world after they saw the videos, for example, the interview with Warren Heward. Also, if you haven't seen it yet, check it out on the Produce Like a Pro channel. Thank you so much for your support. You rock. Have a good time and bring in the good vibes with some great cumbia music. <laughs>